Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Book Workshop. Now, I've been asked time and time again what my favourite sanders are, what my favourite drills are, and several other things. So I'm just putting together a few of my sort of favourite tools, but it's not exhaustive because I'd have to take you around the whole workshop. It'll take about a week uh, to do everything. But I'm just going to give you a flavour for some of the tools which I really feel I can't do without. But before I start, two things. The first is I'm just getting the stock prepared, the wood prepared uh, for the path folding bench. Now, I think most people uh, know that I ages ago made a, a folding bench the same size as a Festival MFT3. And um, I lent it out. <laughs> I haven't got it back. And I didn't make a video about its construction. And I've recently been giving out oodles of copies of the plans and uh, I've had some questions coming back about how it's made. So I'm going to make another one and I'm going to take you through the making of that, but not in this video. It'll be probably another six or eight weeks, perhaps. I'm not sure how the schedule's going to work. And one other thing, there's a really good YouTuber I came across the other day. His name is John McGrath. I'll put the details down here somewhere. Um, and he's from Ireland and he's a woodworker. And I came across his channel by pure chance, and I just really liked it. I don't normally mention other people's video channels, but I really liked it. And because I looked at his channel, I suddenly thought, and I have been asked about this before, I've been asked, you know, how do you go about creating a YouTube channel? How do you go about making YouTube videos? Uh, what are the pitfalls, etc.? Now, it's a long-term project for me, Perhaps in six to nine months' time, I'll produce a video series. I don't know how many videos it'll be about how to create your own YouTube channel and all the various bits of kit you might need, how to go about editing video and how you go about managing your YouTube channel, uh, how you might get some income from it uh, and various bits and pieces like that. Now back to my favourite tools. Now, when I started investing in new tools about uh, 11 years ago, I did a lot of market research, and that's how I ended up working out that probably going for a family of tools like Festool was going to be the right thing for me. And in my first purchase, I bought the Capex saw, the Domino machine, which you'll see in a minute, uh, the TS55 saw, which I'll show you in a minute, and my CT26 dust extractor. Now, all of those tools are absolutely vital to me. The Capex is such an accurate and easy to use mitre saw. You can do uh, all sorts of compound cut combinations. You can go from 50 degrees one way, 60 degrees the other, and 45 degrees this way and that way. You've got lasers that point at where you're about to cut and so on and so forth. And it's really nice. And all of the Festool tools I've got, I will say one thing about them, the dust extraction is superb, which brings me on to the dust extractor. And this is my CT26 dust extractor. It takes uh, dust bags, which hold up to about 25, uh, maybe 26 litres of dust. Uh, but I've got this ultimate dust deputy from Oneida on top, uh, which acts as an interceptor, and most of the dust gets captured in here. And that means I save uh, on bags by quite a bit. I only need to change these bags once a year. But that dust extractor has been with me since my very beginning of my festal days and it's never <laughs> touch wood. It's never gone wrong. It's brilliant. Now you can't expect me to talk about favourite tools without mentioning the path guide system. This is my track saw cutting station and I created this using the path guide system and it is absolutely superbly accurate. It really really and truly is. Now on here I use my fantastic TS55 saw from Festool. It can cut uh, when it's on a, a guide rail up to 50 millimeters deep. Uh, when it's on its own it could cut to 55 millimeters in depth. But I almost always use it on a guide rail. And on here, brilliant cuts every time. And the beauty of it is, is that the dust extraction of this is absolutely superb. And I must show you these uh, Bessie clamps. These are the EZR15-6 and they have six different functions. I've made a video about them at some point in the 
uh, not too distant past and these are really good a pair of these uh, use them on tracks or cutting station use them on your mft3 all sorts of different uses now i'm not going to get it out but here is my little uh, bandsaw from axminster and i've had this now for i whew, i think it's about four three or four years and i resaw all my wood on that i'll be using it when i cut down that stock for the par folding bench and again absolutely brilliant everybody needs a bandsaw and if you're cutting things on a bandsaw you need to be able to then plane them so you've got a flat face and then uh, do the thicknessing and here's my planer thicknesser this one is jet it's the 310 with the helical head and this is really super but there are loads of others on the market and it's my understanding that axements have got a new range i haven't been to a store recently so i can't tell you anything about them at all uh, but uh, do shop around for helical head planar thicknesses and what's over here the bessie k-body revo clamps absolutely brilliant you have parallel action and they come in so many different lengths. I've got lots of them, as I'm sure you know. And these uni clamps, I use these a huge amount. And again, these come in different lengths. Well worth it. Now, slowly but surely, I've been getting some of these FAMAG drills. And again, they're, they're not cheap. And so you have to sort of do it very slowly but surely. They're really good quality. and I really like them. You've probably seen me use them quite, quite a bit. Now there's two things here which spark this whole favourite tool business off. Uh, first of all, favourite writer. This is the small writer from Festool, it's the OF1010 and it's got a collet in there, quarter inch, it can also take an 8mm collet, no bigger. And this is the writer I use oh, at least 80%, maybe 85% of the time. It is fantastic. The dust collection arrangements on here are superb. Nice solid bit of dust collection port here. Not going to get chipped or knocked off. It's not plastic. It's a solid bit of casting. Absolutely super. The other tool that was uh, part of the why am I doing this video? Uh, sanders. I've had asked again and again. What's your go-to sander? It's the Festool ETS EC150 Oblique 3. That's this sander. I use granite paper and you can use really coarse stuff and take off a lot of material in one go if you wish. Uh, or you can use fine paper. It's a very gentle, easy to use sander. Again, dust collection, superb. If you wanted to get a second sander, uh, it would be a good idea to get one with a delta capability so you can get into corners. Uh, this is the DTS 400, uh, and that's a really nice sander. I use that quite a bit. My very first sander though was this Rotex 90, and it has three functions. It can do random orbit, it can do Rotex, and that's when it's spinning rapidly and it takes off a lot of material. And you can put a delta pad on here so it can do delta sanding as well. That was my first sander. I used to use it an awful lot, but now this is the one I use most, and that's probably the one I use second most. But if you're just going to buy one, that will do three different functions. Now, what about drills? If you want a, a large drill uh, with a, a good capacity chuck, and also the ability to put um, uh, raw plugs into brickwork and so on, uh, then this PDC uh, 18 oblique 4 is what I uh, prefer. However, having said that, I probably only use this about a third of the time, maybe even slightly less than that, because I have the little CXS and it's a sibling, the TXS. Slightly different layout, same motor, same sort of function, and these are really nice as sort of go-to uh, little drills or drivers to put screws in or the odd um, uh, small hole in a piece of wood. Now, when it comes to measuring and marking, the hero in this workshop is this precision T-rule from Incra, and you use a 0.5 millimeter lead pencil in it, and you can uh, make pencil marks, which the center of which are at quarter millimeter intervals. Although the lead is half a millimeter wide, uh, you can still get uh, a good deal of accuracy using this, and I love it. And I've got this eye gauging uh, caliper here, and this is one that when you switch it on, knows exactly where it is. And so you don't need to switch it on and zero every time, it's zeroed automatically. I could not manage without a calculator cheap and cheerful, whatever you want to get, something that doesn't matter if you drop a piece of wood on it, uh, but I really do 
check. I measure twice, sometimes more than that. And I also do my calculations at least twice just to make sure. Wearer tools, absolutely super duper. This is just one of the wearer kits I've got. Uh, this is the sort of thing I would uh, carry around with me if I'm visiting people and they say, oh, would you mind putting this picture up or whatever it might be. The Festal Domino, and this is the DF500, has absolutely transformed the way I go about my woodwork. I absolutely love it. When I got this, I was able to sell both my Lamello machine and also my big old-fashioned Morsing machine. So this is absolutely super. If you're going to get one tool, get this. Right, now for my little baby table saw, I have the Festal uh, CMS TS. Now this isn't made anymore as far as I know, it's probably quite difficult to get hold of now, but inside here is a TS55 saw, and it can be removed if you ne needed to use it for something else, and you use this as a table saw, and it's really, really good, I love it. And this is its uh, cousin, uh, this is the Festal CMS OF, and it is the uh, router table. Now, again, Absolutely super duper. The writer I've got in here is the Festal OF 1400, uh, which I started not to like too much as a handheld writer, but it's perfect for a writer table because it's got half inch capability uh, with its collet and also it's got very easy collet changes. And in this setup, you do not need a collet extension. Now, most of my cutters I've got are professional ones from Trend, and I really do recommend these. Now, I appreciate that not everyone can afford to get all this really nice kit all in one go. But as you buy things and save up and so on, try and get the best, and they will last the longest. Just do your best. And, and finally, whilst we're over in this corner, you have to have a pillar drill. Now, get what you can afford, uh, basically, you get what you pay for and get as good a pillar drill as you can and do your market research make sure it's got the chuck you like this this one is a keyless chuck which I really prefer and I only need a ben bench mounted one and that's what I have set up here I don't need the full uh, floor mounted one so this is just a little bit cheaper and so pillar drill very very useful now it really is a shame that not all the tool shops in the UK are open uh, but if you need any advice about anything, just hunt around on YouTube and see what you can find about the particular type of tool you're interested in. Uh, I'll do my best to continue to help everyone, but I do get a, a lot of emails and, and comments to re respond to and so on. So please forgive me if it takes a little while to get around to, to, to responding to your particular query. But one, once conditions allow, do get into a shop, go and look at the tools that you like, talk to the shop staff there, whichever shop it is. Obviously, I usually go to Axminster, but it doesn't matter whichever shop you go to. Uh, talk to the staff. Generally speaking, they're all really knowledgeable. Most of them are woodworkers anyway, and that's how they got hired to do the job in a woodworking type shop. So do your market research. Now, I want to get one thing across. Now, during my first 30 odd years of uh, woodworking, I was just buying those tools that I thought I needed at the time. And I was buying cheap and cheerful most of the time. And looking back on it, um, I'm not really sure whether it was the only option I had available. Perhaps I should have spent uh, just a little bit more money and not bought so many. I don't know. But the, the one thing I'd say is try and buy the very best uh, that you can when you go out to buy a new tool. Now, it's, Rome wasn't built in a day. Uh, when you get to my age, you'll then end up with some nice tools which you'll have had a number of years of absolute super use from and they will certainly see you through to the end of your woodworking days. So try and get the very best that you can when you go out to buy a new tool. Many thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye. <music>